Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Efforts continue at improving St. Lucia's tourism products with the training of nearly 300 workers. The Department of Health reviews and strengthens its vaccination program. The Make It Happen Foundation donates to the Women's Support Center. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. St. Lucia's tourism industry continues to record strong growth led by the cruise sector. With the island's capacity to welcome Vista, Quantum and Freedom class vessels, cruise arrivals increased by 13.6% in 2018. The Caribbean Tourism Organization is projecting 6-7% to growth this year. It is against that backdrop that the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, the Ministry of Tourism, Invest St. Lucia and SLASPA have teamed up to ensure continuous enhancement of St. Lucia's cruise tourism product. Nearly 300 frontline staff of onshore businesses began a training program. Janelle Norville has the details. The Florida Caribbean Cruise Association, FCCA, is hosting a two-day customer service frontline training for stakeholders of the cruise sector. The training is being facilitated by Aquila's Center for Cruise Excellence. The training, according to Aquila's trainer and international business development manager, Claudine Paul, encompasses training in the areas of tour operator excellence, tour guide excellence, and port excellence, all designed to help the key players in the cruise industry achieve excellence in their ports, tours, guides, and businesses. We've been working with many destinations since 2007. This is the first time we're in St. Lucia. We've worked in many destinations that are very close to here and lots of really, really good feedback. Uh, lots of um, guest satisfaction levels increasing, lots of great feedback from the cruise lines as well. And it's really helping overall, um, especially with getting people to work together as well, which is really important. Once you get everybody working together, you really start to see things happen. Excellent customer service according to Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, is essential to St. Lucia's tourism product. The minister expounded on the importance of those in the front line of the cruise industry. All of the frontline people who engage with cruise passengers from time to time that have such a critical role to play in shaping the experience of the cruise passenger, they're the ones that we're targeting here today. They're the ones that we're teaching sales techniques, customer service, and going that extra mile and to ensure that St. Lucia have the competitive edge so that when people come, um, it is impressed upon them that it is not the Minister of Tourism, it is not the Prime Minister or the Cabinet or the policy makers that is responsible for that good delivery of service or but the biggest impact on the customer's experience in our destination has to do frontally with them and I think that this is what we're seeing here today uh, a lot of issues are being discussed on how uh, they can better themselves and reinvent themselves and to add to the overall advancement of the destination. In an effort to ensure that best practices are adopted following the training frontline officers will be evaluated in their respective lines of duty. The officers upon completion of the training will become certified frontline experts in customer service. The training is being held in collaboration with various entities, including the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, Invest St. Lucia, and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. St. Lucia Jazz sounded off this past weekend with crowd-pleasing events in Ancillary and Labry. This year, organizers of the festival have teamed up with Jazz at Lincoln Center for heightened musical feel for jazz enthusiasts. The collaboration will also benefit national musicians who will be exposed to master classes facilitated by the center. More from Anissa Antoine. Via a first-time collaboration with Jazz at Lincoln Center, the week-long jazz festival features five renowned artists in residence in modern jazz performing at intimate venues and public settings throughout St. Lucia. Jason Orlane, Director of Programming and Touring at Jazz at Lincoln Center, explained that the collaboration forms part of an effort to bring the festival back to its original form. We're a non-for-profit jazz organization based in New York City. We've been around for a little over 30 years. And our mission is to grow a global audience for jazz. 
uh, through a few different ways. One is through performances, that's concerts um, and touring, uh, through education, uh, through classes and uh, some music competitions that we produce, and through advocacy, and that's supporting other organizations that are supporting jazz. So this seemed like a, a, a kind of a match made in heaven, if you will, or heaven right here in St. Lucia, <laughs> where uh, we could lend some of our expertise in programming jazz and marketing and social media and those sorts of things with a place that already has a history of presenting jazz in one of the most idyllic settings in the world. St. Lucian music students will be given an opportunity to attend master classes and workshops hosted by the artists in residence such as Etienne Charles and Russell Hall. Maneva Ross is the public relations officer at events company St. Lucia. Very critical to the shift for St. Lucia jazz is um, an education component um, and of course that comes about because we understand that jazz has often been seen as a niche market and we think it's critical that we get the masses to understand the art form itself, um, to understand the genre and so as part of the, the thrust, as part of the drive to create a unique product for our St. Lucia Jazz Festival. Um, understanding as well that we're competing so heavily right here in the region um, and outside of that, we wanted to, of course, identify ourselves as having a unique product, a unique brand, which is the St. Lucia Jazz Festival. Jackie Mathre, Senior Marketing Manager at the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, informed that the Jazz Festival is drawing a lot of international attention. On the international side, we have had such an outpouring of interest from, from the outside world. We're having, on Wednesday, we're having uh, a lot of international journalists are going to be descending to St. Lucia. We're having the BBC, we're having the New York Post, we're having CNC3 from uh, Trinidad, we're having L'Officiel, uh, we're having Ma France Antilles from Martinique, and many, many, many others. Um, the excitement is growing uh, from last week, from Friday, which started at Ancelaray. I think uh, there's been a couple of years that people have kind of, you know, they've been kind of waiting to see what's going on with this new refiguration of the jazz festival and uh, this year really I think magic is about to take off and we are really feeling it from the outside. On Wednesday 8th of May 2019, events company St. Lucia will host the first ever St. Lucia Jazz Cruise aboard the Pearl featuring Russell Hall's Enigma. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. Meantime, St. Lucia Jazz is this year being staged at new venues. Organizers led the Minister for Tourism on a tour for a first-hand view. The St. Lucia Jazz Festival 2019 promises to be epic with a number of new venues added to the event. Minister in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, with responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, highlighting the new additions indicated the importance of decentralizing the event. To date we've had jazz in about three, three, three communities um, and there's a cry and I think that's what we wanted. When the jazz festival rolls into St. Lucia, we don't want it to just be in a few locations. We would like the entire nation to embrace jazz. And from what we're seeing this year is that there are a number of small events happening, small events happening across the country um, and bringing in um, the opportunities and creating those opportunities for our young people, um, our local talent to be showcased um, um, publicly. Event St. Lucia, according to Minister for Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Dominic Fede, has increased its assets with the addition of two temporary structures to its arsenal. The minister noted with the addition of the structures, Event St. Lucia has expanded its mandate, allowing St. Lucia the competitive edge and an opportunity to take advantage of a new niche market. St. Lucia has lost out on a lot of business in the meeting and incentives and conventions business. Um, the largest conference room can only facilitate about 400 people. And so if the conference is about over a thousand, it becomes very difficult for St. Lucia to um, host these conferences. And so this investment is timely, it is very important and strategic for the furtherance of tourism. It gives us a chance to become a lot more competitive uh, in competing and pitching for uh, meeting and incentives and, and convention business. So now, um, this is good news for the industry. It's ideally located in the north where you've got the, the bed stock or the room stock, if you will. And I think that this is going to all go well. The temporary structures, according to Chief Executive Officer of Events St. Lucia, Thomas Leons, will make its debut at the St. Lucia Jazz Festival 2019 at the Grizzly Park. 
The venue is ideal as it offers patrons an intimate setting where they can fully submerge themselves in the jazz music, among other things. At this structure here, um, starting tomorrow evening, we shall be hosting four shows for the St. Lucia Jazz Festival 2019. So tomorrow night we have um, Joey Omisil and Patrick Bartley. That show starts at 7 p.m. Uh, the cover charge is US $50 or EC 135. Um, on Thursday, we have Russell Hall's family band and Patrick Bartley's Dreamweaver Society again. Um, that's on Thursday. That show starts at 10 p.m., so a late night show. Um, so after you've done your dinner, maybe you're taking some fish on the grocery strip, you can amble over to the structure behind you and take in some jazz from 10 p.m. onwards. The two structures house a total of 1,700 individuals and cost an investment of $3 million. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The Department of Health and Wellness, in response to the growing outbreaks of measles in a number of countries in the Americas and Europe, is treating the situation as an opportunity to enhance its vaccination program. This includes identifying persons who have not received the required vaccines and providing the measles vaccines to persons whose vaccination status is not compliant with the established protocol. St. Lucia has been measles-free since 1990, largely due to its high immunization rate. But globally, there has been a reversing trend in immunization against measles. Persons across the globe are choosing not to immunize themselves and their children against the disease, which according to St. Lucia's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Merlene Fredericks James, has caused a resurgence of the disease. Just last week, the Free Winds cruise ship entered St. Lucia's ports and had to be quarantined after it was revealed that there was one confirmed case of the disease. The ship has since left the island, and the Ministry of Health is now alerting the public on the possible threat that this resurgence can pose to the population. Measles is a serious and highly contagious disease that can cause debilitating or fatal complications, including an infection that leads to swelling of the brain, severe diarrhea and dehydration, pneumonia, and permanent vision loss. The acting national epidemiologist says a surveillance system is in place should the threat arrive in St. Lucia. One of the things we do is called syndromic surveillance, which is where we monitor not the disease itself, but groups of disease based on um, their presentation. So we monitor what is called fever and rash. So there are a whole set of diseases or illnesses which can cause fever and rash, and that is monitored. And every case of fever and rash, which is how, like I said, measles would present, these warrant an investigation to find out what the cause is, and we interview the patient, whoever is presenting. So it sets in place a whole um, chain reaction when an individual presents with fever and rash. Up to 90% of people who come in contact with an individual who has the disease and is not vaccinated can get the disease. The disease is preventable through two doses of a safe and effective vaccine. This vaccine in St. Lucia is a combination vaccine for measles, mumps and rubella, the MMR. Our vaccines generally are procured through PAO, um, through the revolving fund. So I, persons may have concerns about the effectiveness and safety of the vaccines. And we are committed with um, PAHO, the Ministry of Health that is, is committed to ensuring that all of the vaccines that are available in St. Lucia, including the measles, mumps and rubella vaccine, is safe and effective. The vaccine processes go through rigorous scrutiny to ensure that when it gets to St. Lucia, that the vaccines are in fact safe and it has been proven to be very effective in protecting against um, the diseases, measles, mumps and rubella. Medical Officer of Health Dr. Sharon Belma george has noted that there are areas that need to be strengthened when it comes to protecting against measles. We saw the need to strengthen some of our linkages in terms of working in a more coordinated manner and closely with the Ministry of Education to ensure that the vaccination cards are complete on children um, entering school. So these are some of the, of the measures which we have put in place in terms of lazing and working directly um, with the, the various sectors to, to strengthen and to ensure that we are fully um, prepared to, to manage possible cases coming in on the island. 
The chief medical officer notes that persons who have adequately been vaccinated against the disease should not be worried and encourages those who are not vaccinated to do so. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Everyone is at risk for getting a foodborne illness. While most foodborne illness cases are mild and go unreported, long-term health complications and even death can occur from a foodborne illness. Foodborne illnesses are caused by contamination of food at any stage of preparation. If you are a food handler involved in home-based food production, meat, fish, chicken or a big shop, as a food vendor, how you prepare food can put your customers at risk. Do you know the risks and how to avoid them? The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards can help you. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome once again to your update on happenings in youth development and sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Local physical education and sports teachers are part of an international FINA Level 1 open water coaching program which got underway Tuesday. This is in keeping with the mandate of the St. Lucia Aquatic Federation's mandate to make accessible international certification for all interested persons. The five-day FINA Level 1 Open Water Coaches Clinic is open to anyone who is interested in becoming an open water swimming coach. Open water coaching presents a different set of dynamics to pool coaching and therefore requests its own certification as directed by the international body, FINA. The Open Water Coaches Clinic is being conducted by world-renowned FINA lecturer, Stephen Cassidy. He's a member of the FINA Technical Open Water Swimming Committee and a member of the Board of Directors of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. Cassidy has served in nearly every role in the sport, a former professional marathon swimmer, a record-breaking channel swimmer, a national team coach, USA Swimming and FINA administrator, Olympic official, race announcer, race director, and strong advocate of the sport. The government of Cuba has reassured its commitment to collaborate with St. Lucia in the area of sporting development. Cuban ambassador to St. Lucia, His Excellency Alejandro Simancas Mare, says Cuba is happy to be able to continue the collaboration between the government of St. Lucia and the Cuban Deportes Institute. Uh, sports is a priority in Cuba. It's a part of our culture and, and I have been I have seen, sorry, that in San Lucia is the same. We have the same uh, spirit, a sport spirit that this is something that we share. And here in San Lucia are working trainers in the field of basketball, in the in track and fields, and in the Ministry of Sports, there is a Cuban specialist uh, also working, uh, advising in the. Um, methodological system of the sports. So it makes us uh, very happy that we can contribute also in that way. Uh, uh, I have seen uh, and I have met the, the glory of the San Lucia sport, Levin Spencer. And, and first time I, I saw her was by television in Cuba, competing against Cuba. She won. But we were happy that the one who won the queue and the one who beat the queue was was a San Lucia and sports. Ambassador Mare made a disclosure during an interview with the Government Information Service Tuesday. The two more recent coaches under this attachment are Juan Eddy and Roberto Montalvo, both assigned to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Eddy specializes in basketball 
and Montalvo in track and field. They are both stationed in the south of the island. And as we end, a reminder that Inter-District Primary School's female football kicks off at the South Plain Field Wednesday. Competition will be among schools in the northern region, districts 1 through 4. The day's action set to kick off at 10 a.m. to 10-minute hours per match, teams 7 aside. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, the Ministry of Education and the St. Lucia Football Association using this competition to develop female football at the grassroots level. And that's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Make It Happen Foundation since inception has been devoted to helping police officers and firefighters with upgrades to their workspaces and providing equipment where needed. Most recently, the foundation has broadened its reach to support women victims of domestic violence and their dependent children. In March, the foundation hosted the first ever Tea and Testimony event, which brought over 300 women together to help raise funds for the Women's Support Center. On April 29th, the foundation made a check presentation in the amount of $15,000 to the center from the proceeds of the Tea and Testimony event. Spearheading the foundation is Raquel Dubile Chastney. Domestic violence victims um, and women who require a safe place of refuge, it tends to not get a lot of the attention that it, that it deserves. And so this is just a very small measure um, to say that we support what you do. Um, we value the, the um, haven that the center provides for those women and we will be offering continued support as and when we can. So the funds raised this year were from the Tea and Testimony Tea Party held in, in, in March, and we're very grateful that could we, we could provide a small contribution today. The Women's Support Center was established in 2001 as a temporary place of safety for women victims of intimate partner abuse and their children, and provides 24-hour service for these women who fear for their lives in a secure, safe, comfortable, and supportive environment. The center's manager, Sylvie Edwards, expressed heartfelt gratitude for the timely donation. Those women come to the center for refuge. We provide counseling for them. We take a holistic approach. We also have to provide for all of their needs because very often when those women run from their homes, they live with nothing. So when they come to the shelter, we have to provide everything for them as well as their children. So the shelter was there from 2001. We do the counseling. We send the kids to school. We find jobs. We find homes. We assist in every way that we can in assisting these women. Even after leaving the shelter, we also con we provide continued support for them as well. In recent years, the center has also developed a student assistance program through which children of clients receive assistance with the acquisition of school supplies, uniforms, and in some cases, payment of school fees. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Was that an earthquake? No. What do you do if there's an earthquake? Drop, cover, and hold on. What does that mean? You drop to the ground, take cover underneath a sturdy table or desk, and hold on until the shaking stops. What if there's no table or desk? Stay away from the walls, windows, and doorways. Use your hands to cover your head and face, and crouch in a corner of the building. But what if you're outside? Go to an open space away from buildings, trees, street lights, and utility wires. Drop to your knees, protect your head with your arms, and wait for the shaking to stop. Wait a vigilant for tout ça qui est Et pour pas ouais pour changer contre où il est si nécessaire. Pas dans un tremblante. N'importe bagage qui capable de déplacer et tomber, cloison, la porte, fenêtre, mais avec appareil capable poser danger. Changer, protéger tes tout haut n'importe bagage qui capable de déplacer. Pas panique. Consentité à quatre tremblé, à coupé, couvert tes tout avec espéré bout. C'est un commission par groupe management des as bien fort et place management des as en cette ici. Et financé par l'Agence pour le développement international américain, bureau assistance des as l'autre pays. 
Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame, département qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement, c'est le GIS, ACMP Television, puis à NTN, qui a posé la nouvelle Arqueo. Posé la Primus Hutchinson. La journée un appel pour cette ici pour une bonne coup de précaution contre maladie la rougeole, particulièrement après une formation qui montre qu'il y a un bateau qui est des qui était affecté puis vers une salle cette ici récemment. Chef officier médical, Dr. Merlin Frederick James, dit qu'il y a une conférence et puis les membres de puis il y a hier faire un soin qui paye cette ici en huit pour trouver maladie ça là si mon papa la vaccine contre vers une qui a bâillé la rougeole. Selon chef officier médical là. Malgré bateau a pas été trouvé permission pour passager débarqué et par conséquence tenu pour retourner en pays, ça pas voulait dire peuple pays a supposé pour moins de précaution. Docteur Merlin Frederick James Vertiki, dernière fois que cette ici tenu cas de la région, c'était dans l'année 1990. Mais c'est faux peuple pays a compris que cette ici a voyagé en plusieurs pays internationaux et plusieurs en ces pays ça là j'ai trouvé en grande quantité cas la région. Pays comme l'Amérique, l'Angleterre, et l'autre pays, le Venezuela, en parmi l'autre, et aussi les touristes qui ont visité cette ici. Alors, Dr. James a crié à ce peuple cette ici, particulièrement les parents, pour faire assurer qu'ils ont fait trouver la vaccine contre la région. Si cette ici, et nous savons cette ici, à présent, nous avons des gens, des gens qui ne peuvent pas qui pour un vaccin pour, pour protéger eux, um, pour protéger eux. C'est mon sala, personne qui n'a pas de problème de vaccin, de mesures de vaccin, à risque pour jouer une maladie sala. Pour même, pour jouer une maladie sala, le chef officier médical a aussi conseillé les parents pour garder quatre petits enfants pour que si ils ont déjà trouvé la vaccin sala, et si ils n'ont pas assuré à l'air, ils ne pourraient pas se faire la vaccin sala, à ce moment-là, sala, pour dire des choses. Si ils ont déjà pris une c'est toutes ces vaccins pour mes os ou pas ni rien pour worry pour 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 um, pour pas ni rien pour pour worry mais si ou eh ben ichou um, pour que pour les vaccins then si un cas maladie a venu en en cette ici um, ou ça joue ni selon docteur Frederick James ces petits enfants en an huit pour perdre la vie si ou pas trouver la vaccine pour la région là les docteurs n'ont pas été plus capables à présent pour traiter les gens qui trouvaient blessés sérieusement et qui ont pour la mort. Ils ont gagné les officiers médecins de l'hôpital Jackson Memorial pour faciliter leur entraînement, pour adresser la situation. Ils ont consulté des affaires de l'opération. Dr. Charles Greenwich a déclaré qu'il était plein et puis étonnement ça là parce qu'il a aidé le docteur pour sauver plus la vie. Dr. Greenwich dit que cette ici, c'est un de ces 80 pays qui a suivi le programme ça là. Le président de la fondation de Tchè et Fissi Mola, cette ici, il y a octave, bien plein que l'organisation a été pour tuer ses propres financiers pour l'initiative ça là. Il y a aussi le docteur Hod, l'hôpital Jackson Memorial, Dr. Good Post, remarqué que l'organisation a été tuée commitment pour continuer le travail et puis docteur et nos sociétés ici pour sauver la vie de monde qui trouvait blessé à mauvais accident. Nos sociétés docteur de l'hôpital Victoria et Tapion trouvait bénéfice et tout le monde là. Collège de Saint-Alphonse, si il y a un agrément de gymnase et puis il y a un collège d'éducation à l'Université de Niagara en Amérique. Gymnase à la CAI offert ses ports à façon pour transformer le programme en Saint-Alphonse et qui assister pour pousser le développement des instituteurs pour plus au courant et puis manière le programme d'éducation qui a opéré en région et le pays international aussi. Gouan Gwek, le directeur du collège Saint-Alphonse, John Calix, a assuré ses ports au collège là. Ministère de l'Éducation et gouvernement cette ici. Il y a un ancien professeur de l'Université de Niagara, Dr. Patricia Brisco, déclaré que l'agrément a aidé toutes les DC institutions pour apprendre à l'autre. L'agrément a été le 29 avril l'année ici. Et ce que ça nous entend à bout de nouvelles là, je vous remercie autant pour garder, je vous remercie l'invitation pour jeter plus moins encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous avez pris cette nouvelle à quoi vous avez. À nous avons pour Nisha. Merci au Pale Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise.
Conditions are partly cloudy and breezy, becoming cloudy at times with some scattered showers. A marginal increase in moisture and instability in the lower atmosphere over the southern eastern Caribbean region will result in some scattered showers during the next 24 hours. The Atlantic high pressure system will maintain a moderate easterly wind flow across the eastern Caribbean region during the forecast period. The tide for Castries Harbor became high at 6.22 p.m. The tide for V4 Bay will be high at 7.29 p.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.39 a.m. That brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles. Thank you.